cigarettes. 1987 U.S. category sales totaled $34 billion. To put that in perspective, that's more than three times what Americans spent on domestic passenger cars last year. Clearly, cigarettes is a powerful and dynamic category. The cigarette category is also among the most profitable dry grocery categories in the supermarket and one of the most misunderstood. Despite an enormous direct product profit, the cigarette department is rarely given adequate attention in supermarkets. The result? Super share of industry sales has stagnated in recent years. Supermarket operators need to rethink cigarette merchandising strategies to prevent competition not only from other supers, but also from beyond the boundaries of their trade class. A number of factors drive cigarettes' remarkable profitability, such as the category's tremendous consumer base. Roughly 50 million people, or nearly 30% of the adult population, smoke. Next, there's high value. Few supermarket items can match the $11 retail price of a carton of cigarettes. A typical supermarket transaction becomes about one-third greater when a carton of cigarettes is included. And high volume. The average store sells about 400 cartons and 1,600 packs of cigarettes each week. Another consideration is the cost of sales. Cigarettes are easy and efficient to handle, and manufacturers' shelf allowances in many cases offset the retail occupancy costs. Supermarkets and grocery stores account for 40% of total cigarette volume, or nearly $14 billion in sales. This may sound good, but supermarkets face increasing challenges from other trade classes, most notably convenience stores. There are several reasons why supermarket share of cigarette sales has leveled. Cigarette smokers are among the most brand-loyal consumers. In fact, some studies suggest that when consumers can't find the brand they want, over 60% will go elsewhere. Maintaining an adequate in-stock inventory for the variety of brands and packings needed to satisfy today's consumer requires a lot more attention than it once did. Consider this. In 1980, you could satisfy 99% of your customer base with 132 brands and 161 rows to display the product properly. Today, you need 228 brands and 260 rows to reach that level, an increase of more than 60% in shelf space. Space, as we're all well aware, is a critical issue today. The average new supermarket is nearly 40,000 square feet. Yet cigarettes get the same amount of space they got in 1980 when new stores averaged 33,000 square feet. Most retailers, regardless of store size, just haven't increased the space needed to meet the demand. Many chains seeking uniform merchandising make decisions in isolation of local factors and sales demands. Space allocations for cigarettes remain the same from store to store, even though the store's volumes may vary from five to $20 million per year. Squeezing the space devoted to this category results in lost sales. In most cases, existing space doesn't allow for the selection needed to meet consumer demand. And even if most customers' brand selections are available, lost sales and profits result because inventory falls short on better selling brands, causing out of stocks. Recognizing the cigarette category's profit potential is a critical first step in recapturing lost sales opportunities. When analyzing the performance of cigarette departments, many operators still view manufacturer shelf payments as the primary profit contributor. That's a mistake. Planogramming for shelf payments in isolation of brand performance results in misallocation and out of stocks. The average cigarette sale in the U.S. combining packs and cartons generates $2.13 in gross profit. Factoring in discounts, allowances, and minimal product costs, you get a direct product profit of $2.21. In other words, cigarettes are among a very few product categories that carry gross profit to the bottom line. In contrast, shelf payments actually contribute less than 10% of the total average yield of $2.21 per carton sold. Single package sales generate even greater profits. On average, each carton sold as packs will result in $3.15 in DPP. 
Traditionally, however, supermarket retailers have considered single packages to be a relatively insignificant part of their cigarette business. Industry-wide, single pack share has increased from 34% in 1982 to almost 50% in 1986. Consequently, supermarket operators now have an opportunity here to increase profits through more aggressive package merchandising and promotion. As with cartons, maximum performance is a direct result of sound merchandising. A centralized merchandising system with sufficient SKUs to provide wide selection and increase customer convenience will add to the category's performance. Centralizing pack merchandising hardware will also provide the perfect location for cigarette promotions designed to capture impulse sales. Carton sales, a traditional stronghold of supermarkets, face increasing competition from other retail outlets, like C stores and gas stations. More and more, they are recognizing the high profit potential of full category merchandising and are seeking to expand Carton's performance in their operations. Supers can meet this challenge by pricing cartons aggressively and promoting the category. Prominent end cap positioning is also a must for strong carton sales, as is offering a wide selection. Let's look at how an increase in carton space allocation can increase profitability in your operation. First, increase category space. For example, an increase of just four feet will accommodate 360 more cartons in inventory. This will not only reduce the level of out-of-stocks on the faster-moving brands, but also provide the space to widen selection. And increasing the category space is really a cost-free decision. Why? The increased inventory of 360 cartons adds up to only $36 a month in holding costs, a figure covered six times over by the increase of $200 a month in merchandising shelf payments. Your net gain is equal to $164 per month before your first carton is even sold. As you've just seen, there's tremendous potential for profit in cigarettes. But we at Philip Morris want to help you increase the profitability of cigarettes in your store. Your Philip Morris representative has the information, services, and programs you need to help generate more profit from this profitable category.